top review. Brendan Steer could make the Irishman, but Martin Scorsese couldn't make the Velocipaster. That's facts. That's cold hard facts. That is facts. <laughs> Welcome to Camp Counselors, a more butter show where we talk about movies and pretty much everything we want. Typically some bad ones, but some good ones sneak in every now and again. And today, I think, is one of those days. I am Amanda the Jedi, joined by my co-host, Mr. Gigi. How are you doing today, man? Hey, everybody. How's it going? I am Mr. Gigi. Yes, you heard correctly. Camp Counselors are more butter production. Make sure to subscribe and follow the show on Spotify. Really helps us grow this awesome community. We are actually charting in the top 50 TV and film podcasts on Spotify. So keep leaving those five star reviews so we can keep it saucy. Excellent. Excellent. So today we are going to be discussing the Velocipaster, which I, I have been championing this movie for years. I've been I was patiently awaiting this movie before it even came out. But we're going to do some first takes here. Mike, this is your first time watching this movie. So I just really want to know, what is your thoughts about this kind of like online viral cult classic in the making? Well, I feel like I'm going to let me give you some context first, okay? Because I feel like (laughs) we might disagree (laughs) on something here. I watched this film when I was uh, sleep deprived and <laughs> grumpy. So I think I looked at it in a, or I took it in a different lens, right? Oh no. Because when I was watching it, I was like, okay, I'm on board. I get the jig. I get what's going on. I was laughing a few times. I was like, okay, this is cool. But by the end of it, I think I just started to get really frustrated. And I was like, I don't know if I like this movie, honestly. Cause I don't know if maybe it was a combination of, Everybody hyping it up and being like, Velocipaster, good, bad movie, fire, everyone's going to love it. It's a fucking pastor that's a raptor, shit's crazy, (laughs) Jurassic Bible, go nuts. And then also the combination of me hating my life while I watched it. But I, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that for now. That's fair. That's fair. I, I I can take that. I will say there are aspects of this movie that I definitely like more than other aspects, but that's okay. But my first... My experience with this is basically I I used to stream a lot and I would watch trailers for movies on stream and just kind of react to them in real time and talk to people. And eventually one day the trailer for the Velocipaster popped up in my YouTube recommended. And I have never been more blown away by a trailer in my life. I don't think they've got some guy doing a fake Australian accent. And every couple seconds he goes, the Velocipaster. It's great. It's amazing. I love it. I almost flew to Pennsylvania for a premiere of this early, um, but I still had like a day job at the time. So it was like not realistic. Um, Then it finally came out and I just, I truly, I truly fell in love in a lot of ways because it just exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways because it's, it's so tender while also being ridiculous. uh, And then it just really fully allows itself to descend into the insanity. Um, So kind of like a big fan of that, but uh, I guess let's kind of move on into to what it is, kind of explain the movie. Uh, If you haven't seen it, it should be available right now on Amazon Prime. I know for a while it was on like Tubi in Australia and stuff. I'm not sure where it is worldwide. Maybe our kind Uh, editors can pop that on screen or something. It's high key on YouTube just for free. I don't, I I think with- Don't, my friend is the director. I think, I thought it was with consent. It's not. Okay, it's not, don't watch it on it's YouTube. Not, Sorry. It's not, I thought it seemed, I had, it seemed consensual. Never mind. That's fucking. Maybe I'm, he changed his mind, but it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Amazon if you have Prime. Prime, at least watch it there. I'm sure, you know, like support the dude. And I wasn't friends with him beforehand. This isn't one of these things that I like it because I'm friends with him beforehand. I'm friends with him now because of like how much I was like championing this movie. Like I was asking for t-shirts when the trailer was out. I got a t-shirt. I have an autographed copy of the Blu-ray with like a nice little handy dandy personalized message on the inside. Uh, me and Brendan are homies now. I've interviewed him a couple times. Uh, he's a really interesting dude. Good friends with him now. Um, maybe that, and maybe that does affect my feelings now, but I liked it before I ever talked to the dude, so I'm good. But the Velocipaster is what it sounds like. It is a pastor who can turn into a Velociraptor, but when you see it, it's not really a raptor, but we'll get into to why that is. But it's like, it's a comedy horror film. It's intentional 
it's intentionally bad. Uh, he calls it like circular comedy, like something that it, it basically just tries to capitalize in on that idea that there are movies that end up un unintentionally being so bad that they're funny. And this is something that's like, I'm purposely going to make all the choices to go off the rails to steer into it as much as possible. And I think he, I personally think he succeeded with it. Uh, and it's got a fun little story. It, it basically just started as like a university project uh, when he was in college. So they just did like a, a short little trailer and it kind of came out of him. He was trying to type the word Velociraptor and for some reason it autocorrected to Velocipaster, which I actually don't know why it ever would have done that, but it did. <laughs> and it gave him the idea to make that trailer for a film project and then for like the next handful of years, he couldn't get it out of his head, wrote the script in like three days, and was just like desperately trying to find funding until his, uh, his partner at the time's uh, mother got him in contact with some kind of investor or, or somebody that she knew in China and was basically like, hey, I know somebody, they, they, like prom they, they invest in arts and stuff in like China and stuff, so like maybe if you send like the script over and a pitch, we'll see. Within two days, he had his $35,000 and went to work on the movie. And that's like a pretty small budget, like really, really small, even for this kind of movie. Mm -hmm. Like 35K is, uh, is pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, he ended up making this movie, uh, I think back in like 2017. And then it started doing rounds and like festival circuits and like small festivals in like 2018 before it finally released in 2019. Uh, a lot of fun stories surrounding this movie um but uh yeah let's kind of like hop in to the story so <laughs> i think the moment i personally knew that i was going to be on board for this is you know he walks outside the church after giving his little like sermon mm -hmm. and his parents are waiting for him he's so excited and then you just hear an explosion noise and he falls back and then it cuts back and instead of it being like a car on fire it just says on screen the effects of car on fire Yes, because <laughs> it's like we don't have the budget. So why even pretend or try? Let's just steer into it. It's the whole idea of like make a make a shortcoming a feature, mm -hmm. you know, and now it's a feature of the movie. I think I, I laughed for like a solid like three minutes when I saw that on screen. And I was like, this is probably going to be better than I could have imagined. What was what were your thoughts around that moment of this here movie? So that definitely sets the tone, right? So as soon as I yes. saw that, I was like, oh, you're really leaning into it, right? Because I was like, good, bad movie. Yes. Didn't know what to expect. Didn't know where they would go for it when he's doing it intentionally. When I saw that on screen, I was like, okay, you're definitely going to go into this. Now I'm curious. You have my attention immediately. The part yep. that uh, first got a pretty good laugh out of me, I don't know if this just says something about me, uh, was when um, one of the, what's what the hell's her name? The girl, the, the prostitute? Carol. 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 Walks up yes. to... Her pimp, who yep, is Frankie Mermaid. Frankie Mermaid, of course, because he's swimming in bitches. And then he just greets her. And then there's immediately just like a cut as he and he just slaps her within like half a second. Yeah. That's when I was like, oh, I, start, I started laughing. I was like, OK, I, I like this. I'm here. They just hard committed. Yeah. He in the script, he was like, I just had this character written with no real lines. So I just like found my friend who I knew could do a good job. And I was like, go crazy. We just set him loose. So the whole like swimming with swimming and bitches thing, that was all him. <laughs> like, just great. I was like, oh man, that's so funny. Uh, I, yeah, I really appreciated that. That again, that's another thing that just really sets the tone in a really solid way. <clears throat> and uh, so if you guys want to know, how does one become a Velocipaster, a Velocipaster Raptor? Uh, basically after his parents died, he decides he's going to go on hit a, a soul searching mission. Um, and ends up in the middle of a ninja feud, which uh, is inspired by an other so bad it's good movie called Miami Connection. Uh, something at the end also ties into my that is probably potentially something we could cover on the show, honestly. Um, and she ends up getting this claw and the claw scratches him and bestows upon him these ancient powers that allow him to turn into a dinosaur uh, without him really realizing he's doing it all the time. But uh, it doesn't happen right away. He go back. He goes back stateside, and he's just like not feeling quite well. Uh, and then he finds out that the aforementioned Frankie Mermaid uh, killed his parents. He was the one who killed his parents on behalf of this ninja collective that has now moved its way over to America into this community. Uh, and he freaks out in the confessional booth, 
and just like rips the dude apart. It is great. I think I love it. I love how the the way I love the attention and care you're taking in describing this movie right now because you're not glossing over <laughs> anything. You're really giving it all the attention it deserves. I know, because, right? But like, if you watch it, it's almost funny that like. She's talking so passionately about this right now. I know. And you're going to watch it, and it's just like, dude walks up, wow, China is East. <laughs> and it's just like. I, those those parts got, like, I love the text transition where it's just, he's just walking in trees. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then I just see, like, a slow, like, word art, just little little slide right or something, just China. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're in China. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> exactly um so yeah that's the thing that this movie kind of has like a few things going on because he's like obviously it couldn't just be a guy that turns into a dinosaur mm -hmm. because that's going to get boring really fast there has to be this other aspect i mean there's a couple so um obviously there's like a uh, when he first turns into the the dinosaur there's like a really nice like jurassic park moment type thing where he's like you just see the flashes of the mouth going and like a guy's screaming and they're screaming like shoot it and it's like literally right out of the jurassic park intro where they're like shoot her but it's just dumb because you just see this like plastic head kind of going yeah, I, or whatever the hell it's made it out looks, of it, it's similar to uh you know those like the meme dinosaur things where you run around and it looks like it's chasing mm -hmm. you or something something like that it's kind of like that yeah. green yeah yeah and that's yes yeah, so, no spoilers uh, funny I don't story spoilers, sorry, but go ahead yeah no spoilers funny story about that suit though mm -hmm. um so they he already had that that was not, before he had the idea for this movie, he was president of his high school's uh, film club and they were going to remake The Last Dinosaur. Um, so the Pennsylvania school district and the taxes that go into it bought them this dinosaur suit uh, that they never ended up using because the, pres the, the principal actually sat down and read the script and was like, too violent. But for some reason, never asked for the dinosaur suit back. <laughs> So it was just sitting in his parents' basement for like 10 years. And he obviously didn't say he still had this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming principal probably thought, oh, it's in like the storage closet or something. So that is just missing. And he has no idea how much Pennsylvania taxpayer money went into this, but that's where they got this god awful suit. And the reason why it's kind of slumped over like that is just because it was just sitting in a basement for 10 years. So in a weird way, this, he, was, this was meant to be. Yeah. It was meant to be like absolutely. I've, I've, that's it, it's definitely more of like a T Rex costume than than a, like it's the size of a raptor, caught like a you know Jurassic Park style raptor. But it is clearly a T Rex. You got the short little arms, big body, big head. But it's still we're going Velocipaster because it's funnier that way. And it makes sense. Um, and this is one of those movies that like I was surprised they ever showed the full thing. Like for most of it, you just see like his hands change every now and again. And he just like cuts necks and it's all brutal and shit. And you think they're just gonna go all the side stuff until they do just show you the full fucking thing at one point. And it's so dumb. Um, but they only had like 32 minutes to film that whole ending sequence. That whole fight at the end? It, yeah. Oh. Basically, they had two days left um, and they were shooting in May and it started raining a bunch because it was up in like the East Coast. Mm. So by the time it stopped raining and things had kind of like calmed down enough for them to use this field, um, they had 32 minutes of daylight left, basically. Uh, the only people who fit in the costume are Brendan, the director, and his brother. So they kind of had to go back and forth really quickly while someone else would kind of like grab the camera and do different things and direct people around. So very stressful mess of a final scene that somehow comes That's together. That's highly impressive, honestly. The way the final scene know, turned right? out. Now that you're saying 32 minutes... I, yeah, I, like I'm sure they did a couple of other things like in little moments where they could, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was like 32 minutes of usable daylight. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Give, give them a little good, yeah. good, important context there. I know, right? There's a lot. There's a lot of good context. So where where would you say uh, for you, where does this movie kind of like f not like fall apart for you maybe a little bit? I think I enjoyed the first half more than I did the second. I think. Remember. I can agree I'm, with I'm going that. from a hazy brain here, but the first half... I remember yeah. laughing every so often just because like uh, writing the script in three days, there was a bunch of random dialogue that worked so well because I was like, mm -hmm. it start to try and be like a normal movie. And then all of a sudden it's just someone says something stupid off the wall <laughs> and I'm just, it, yeah. catch, it hits you, hits you right, gets me to laugh. And then also the, the ongoing bit of something important is happening 
And then one person just starts having this inner monologue and it cuts to a flashback, just cutting off everything yeah. that was happening on, se- yeah. on screen. I love that yeah. every time. That worked very well yeah. for me. So I remember in, this, in the second half, I think what there is this, the whole time I kept thinking, there's going to be a sex scene in this, right? There's there's this on-screen chemistry, which yeah. my life for this movie, not even that bad. But I liked it a lot personally. Big yeah. fan, big fan of the Carol Doug relationship. <laughs> so I, I kept thinking there was going to be a sex scene, and I didn't know how they handle it, right? Because it's always they're always awkward in these types of movies, right? These low budget mm-hmm. films. They took it to another step, and then all of a sudden, I just started seeing all these different transitional effects, all this nice little like Brady yeah. Bunch thing. It's a whole fucking music video, essentially. I liked it. Yeah, and I was just so... I think I was just more in awe at that point. And I didn't know how to react to it. I was like, do I like this? I don't know, but it's a bold decision. And I have to... Mm-hmm. I have to just give it its respect. That's why I can't say I hate this movie. There's no way I can say I hate this movie. Or there's no way I can say, yeah, don't course. watch it. Although I do want to say, just side note. I... This is not what I was expecting at all. I don't know Amazing. why... Stupidly enough, looking at the cover, I went off that cover and I was like, <laughs> it's going to be like this. And then as soon as the movie started, I had to double check. I was like, I don't think this is the right movie. And I kept going. And I was like, no, this is totally it. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That's because like fun facts, uh, posters and covers like this, they get made by like whoever decides they're going to distribute it. Like his first movie, it took, I think, like he said, like 10 years for him to get a cover poster that he actually liked because he had no say mm. in it. Like when you're a certain size, you have no say in what they do it's for your cover of your movie and stuff. So I think that can definitely contribute to it. I think this does the job. Like, I think you see this and you kind of have a general idea of what you're going mm. into. Um, I personally really enjoyed this, the, 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 the editing montage. That's like a music video of their like developing relationship. But I am like a sucker for rom-coms and not like just any kind of like weird romance. Like I like twilight. Like, what do you mm-hmm. expect? Um, so I was like, this is the best. We're adding this in here. It's like tender moments with this guy who's like brutally murdering people, murdered her pimp. So she's got this like emotional connection when she has to go like prove that he killed someone out in the woods. The only clothing he can find to wear is like one of her dresses. So they're just like wandering around in the woods. It's just like tender little moments like that that I loved. Um, Something that might make you appreciate some of those editing choices a little Mm -hmm. bit more. Um, He edited this entire movie himself in Latvia. Why? Why? Why was he there? So apparently um, the person he was with at the time that uh, his whose mom got him in touch with the investor um, was off doing something in Latvia. And the mom was like, you need to go get her and bring her back. I don't think it's, you know, safe or whatever. So he takes a little air Uzbekistan flight out to Latvia. And she's like, no, I'm good. I'm going to stay. I'm doing good. And he was like, OK, cool. Well, I guess I'll just hang around for moral support. So he just hung out (laughs) in like coffee shops editing this movie. So just imagine him making that kind of like Brady Bunch-esque montage to the Math the Band song (laughs) while in like Latvia of all places. It's it's still impressive. I'm just going, as soon as the credits hit and it said written, directed, and edited by, sorry, I don't know his full name, just Brendan Brendan As soon as it hit, I was like, this guy, this this, this guy knows what he's doing. (laughs) This yeah. guy. Yeah. No, it's very fun. Um, yeah, in terms of, like, the music stuff, uh, I know that, like, the opening, his, his he has a band, his band, he used his band for the opening credits. Uh, he used one of his band members' brother's bands for all, like, those punk songs. And then they got the song that they used in that, like, lovey-dovey montage um, because their cinemat- cinematographer had done the, the actual music video for mm-hmm. that song. So he had that like connection. So he, and he's like, I went into it knowing that I needed and could use those songs. So I didn't even bother trying to like think of anything else I'd use in those places. So like any of those scenes where the music is, he, he like planned it out really well in his head, which is always nice, which is nice. Um, yeah, I mean, that type of, that, yeah, ty- any, that type of collaborative yeah. thing, collaborative effort, like homegrown. And in addition, mm-hmm. when you're watching certain scenes, at least when I was, I could obviously they're having fun, right? Because it is such a fucking goofy movie. Yes. But there, were, there were parts where I yeah. could explicitly tell, like I, I could just imagine the director saying, "Like make this face," and then being like, "Okay, yeah, hold on, give me a second here. All right, I'm gonna do it." There's one part, uh, the the reveal at the end. Spoilers. 
uh, that at the ninja guy ends up being his brother that he's going to fight. Yep. And he's like, and so they show those flashbacks <laughs> that were already a part of it. And then they just <laughs> yeah. pan to him instead. There's literally in the kitchen scene, they pan to his face and he just <laughs> throws his eyes back like this, which yeah. in no way has like any type of emotion that would be present in that. But just like, they're like, Hey, make a stupid face or make this intense stare. And I was just like, that's, that's yeah. fun. I love, I love seeing that. It's great. Movie. Yeah, so you mentioned, like, Homegrown, which is, like, pretty fun, because other than his brother having to kind of step in and go in the in the actual dinosaur costume a couple times, uh, his dad was Father Stewart. Oh, no like, shit. He, he got his dad to, yeah, the head priest is his dad, which I just Wait, like. Th- it's like, Dad, do you want to p- play a priest? That guy did great. I was a, I was a big fan of He did great, I know. Yeah, so you'd think, oh, wow, they got, like, one actual actor to be in this that's, like, a little... St- no, that's just, like... We need an old man, dad. <laughs> and then when he has his like war flashback and like somehow his like girlfriend's just there, that's his mom. <laughs> oh, this is, okay. I like this a lot. <laughs> so that's, that's fun. Yeah. So it's just, hey, mom, you want to be in a movie where like you get blown up? Like just like random stuff like that <laughs> is just super fun. Um, that flashback I really like. And I actually like if I go long enough without watching the movie, I kind of forget that parts of that flashback Mm -hmm. happen. Um, So it's always a real treat when it comes back around. Um, Like I said, it, uh, he got a lot of inspiration in terms of like the ninja stuff. uh, And like the end when he's like holding something up in the sky and like a quote goes on the screen. The Gandhi quote that comes on screen. (laughs) Yeah. So that's from the movie Miami connection (laughs) as well. (laughs) So I actually, I haven't watched that one yet. So now I'm actually really excited to check that out. So maybe that's one we can do for this where we're both, where we're both watching something for the first time because I'm guessing you've not seen I've Miami Connection. I've never heard fucking thing, so I'm I'm down. Yeah, so like maybe we should may, maybe we should make an episode on Miami Connection and kind of see uh, what's up here. Or it could be really fun. We could get Brendan on, try to get Brendan on to to kind of like be a third in here from Miami Connection and tell us real quick what he thinks of it and why he likes it so much. Because again, what is what is good having friends if you can't use them for podcasts? Exactly. You know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is an absolutely ridiculous movie um, that, uh, how do you personally feel about the ending? I kind of like the way the whole thing kind of comes together. Uh, I think that, like, obviously the story behind why, like, the ninjas are here are a little, it's like it gets a little bit goofy, but that's very intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are your kind of thoughts there? Are you talking about there? the ending action scene, or are you talking about the remaining scenes after that? Where all of a sudden, like the oh, movie I'm is t- just like like a greaser, like the Fonz or some shit, just like I guess we got to travel totally the world. Fine with him being- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the idea that there's like this syndicate using like Christianity mm-hmm. to like so <laughs> kind of like infiltrate with the movies. with the action scene. I was I I, I like the action scene. That's why when you said the 32 minutes thing, I, I like the action scene. I thought, see, I don't know if I'm just easily impressed by things, but I was like. For this type of movie, because I kept expecting the lowest yeah. amount of effort, right? But I was like, this choreography, not not that bad. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, and they were like, let's let Carol kick some ass, too. Like, she doesn't need to be over. Like, she, she like, takes out, like, mm-hmm. four guys. Like, real good to the point that one guy's like, I'm summoning the bigger guy. <laughs> like, Which is know? actually like, amazing, because in the after the sex scene, when it's just dead silent, and then you just hear, <laughs> there's no sound effects. You just hear a ninja jump in and just kind of make, like, a little yell sound. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, they both get up, <laughs> yeah. and they both whoop ass, unknowingly, unbeknownst yeah. to me. I didn't know Carol was a fucking black belt. And they, they, just, they don't mention it. They don't say anything. Doctor. She doesn't turn around and say, look, cutesy <laughs> yeah, one-liner, like, I used to take jujitsu. It's just, they don't say shit about no. it. So at the end... It's like Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> he, she just fights. So, so at the end, when all this was happening, I love that in the background, you can constantly see Carol when it's not focused on her. And you see her just kind of doing this like mm. Mortal Kombat's way. All the fighters are doing it and they yes. don't stop the entire time. <laughs> Very entertaining stuff. Yeah. I love it. It's so good. And yeah, like even the way that they people are doing like the falls and like the rolls, it's like, oh, you got people that actually know how to like yes. fight and and make it look good. It, even if they're like being thrown around by a fake dinosaur, like you can literally see like the, you see Brendan's head inside the dinosaur sometime with a hand going out to grab other <laughs> arms to like throw around the fake arms and stuff. And that just like really adds to the experience in my opinion, which I always love. It's hilarious. Um, so yeah, this kind of like t- 
took no, I wouldn't like the, I don't want to say the world, but like in terms of what type of, what you would expect for this movie, it did like shockingly well. Like there was a lot of momentum around the, the trailer, um, once it got released. Um, and like, cause like I said, it popped up on my YouTube and there was just kind of like a little bit of like an, a little bit of like an underground stirring for it. And then once it actually released, because it ended up very quickly going to like Amazon prime and some streaming services in different areas. Like, I don't know if it just got pushed at the right time. It was around, like it was like around the pandemic when it ended up on Mm -hmm. streaming services. So I don't know if that kind of helped it go, but like every few months it's like new people find it and you get like a little wave of things. Like he just released a bunch of like new shirts. Like some of them say like, like this one and then other ones that say like priest school, priest (laughs) college, priest college. Priest College, I got one of those on the way. Really excited for that. Um, so what do you think it is about like movies like this that kind of like capture people's hearts and why why people kind of like connect to them in, in, in ways that, you know, typically people want to watch good movies. So what makes them kind of jump in on this kind of stuff? I think people just like uh, almost like just being caught off guard. Like how yeah. silly can you get while staying like in a certain boundary where it's not like just like haha xd random yeah but it's like it's still it's There's like structure con- yes yeah. it's contained comedy and you're just like this is so fucking bizarre velocipaster just a title alone it's just, I, I i have to see what this is about even if i don't like it i have yeah. to fucking play this at least for 15 minutes exactly so i think it's just just people wanting to experience just something along these lines and obviously this is also something that can go viral easily just like you said you know and especially youtubers who cover movies this is i've been fucking asked to review this countless amounts of times like dude you gotta watch velocipaster you gotta watch velocipaster so (laughs) clearly people know about this movie it's up there in the ranks of these types of movies Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i also think that there's like I think you can kind of sense a certain like authenticity to it. Like, like the genuine, like at least with this one, you feel the love here. Like, even if it is, I think a lot of the times when, when people hear, oh, they intentionally went out of their way to make a B movie. You think that like, it's like almost like corporate and they're making like little decisions to try to purposely make things or that they're just going out of the way to make something shitty. Um, but this, like, it was clearly a lot of care went into this specific brand of like shitty B horror movie. Uh, I know that you know, uh, M night Shyamalan's the happening was his idea. He, he was like, I want to make this feel like an intentional B comedy, but it has the backing of like a multi-billion dollar studio. You've got Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel. Like that's never going to feel authentically like a B movie. It's mm-hmm. going to feel like you tried too hard to make something feel stupid. And then people just think it's like stupid. Um, even if you can't have a lot of fun with that one, like Mark Wahlberg's what? No, a classic, but Something like this, I just feel like you, you feel that there was like a lot of like small town care that went into it, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think you can see it on screen. And then obviously you come in hot with the lore that adds so much more <laughs> to it. I think people can even appreciate that, like just him having like a 30 minute interview of him describing these things would be content on its own. Yeah, it's just it's just nice. There's why would you not root for this guy? Yeah, he's great. He's he's got, he's got like so many good ideas. Uh, it's really funny. The next one of the movies he has written right now is like the completely opposite tone. It's like a found footage recorded like incel movie um, that he's incel working movie? on. Incel movie? Yeah, called Montana about like it's like really dark and it's like about like a guy who mm-hmm. is basically an incel who like kidnaps someone and it's like, yeah. So he's hoping to get made that made someday. And that's like the opposite kind of juggling act. That's like, I have to juggle making this movie without making it seem like I'm trying to glorify this like fucking weirdo, (laughs) like, you know? Um, But it's like, it's really interesting listening to how he like processes movies. And then like in the opposite end, he'll tell me about other movies he's working on that are like in the vein of Velocipaster. And I'm like, can I just get a cameo? Can I just get a cameo? (laughs) It's like, I can't ruin this movie. Mm -hmm. So like, just let me walk on. Um, but yeah, he's a super interesting dude. Brendan Steer, strongly recommend following his journey. Um, he does music and stuff too. He's like crazy. But uh, yeah, do you have any other thoughts about the the Velocipaster uh, and kind of where you land on it? So you're telling me that, real quick, there's not going to be a Velocipaster 2. Okay, so um, there is... He's there's works for it. Um, it's kind of one of these things that's jumped around in terms of what he wants to do. 
mm-hmm. with the Velocipaster 2 and what people want for the Velocipaster 2. So at one point he had one idea uh, and then it's going into another thing. I know he he basically just said, I don't want to talk about it anymore until I have more concrete until like, while well, it's still up in the air. Um, cause I know he's like, I feel like the last couple of years have been hard on a lot of people. So he's kind of taking a little bit of like break from, from filmmaking, right. um, to get back into it. But it, there was a lot of interest for this to be like a full, a full thing. So my, my opinion, time will tell. My, my opinion on a sequel to something like this, I think it'd be mm-hmm. very fucking difficult. Cause I feel like there in this movie, there was a lot of magic caught. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to hit that again because um, especially uh, and I'm not saying like, oh, don't give this guy more of a budget or more time. Uh, clearly not. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Make him struggle so you can come get something like this again, you know, but it's just I feel like it's it's hard to follow something like this up. So, yeah, I, I definitely support him and whatever he wants to do, especially I mean the in some movie you described. I'm all for that. I would love him mm-hmm. to, to venture out. I'm not a filmmaker. I'm a content creator. I'm on a smaller level, but I know. Yeah switching something up like that and trying not to fucking what is it catch catch lightning twice in a bottle what the fuck's the same yeah lightning yeah yeah catch lightning twice in a bottle yeah i would just let you support the man and what he does yeah absolutely he's got a lot of good ideas i've heard a lot of the good ideas for other movies that are more in like the velocipaster vein and like what he would probably do if he wanted to continue things out um and there's a lot of building blocks here that he can work with so i trust him i trust that he can do do it well Uh, i'm like really excited for whatever he does next no matter how long that takes uh and again we'll be vying very very hard to at least get a walk-on role just to say one word just to say one thing that's all i want i'll fly myself there i don't need to get paid I'll tell everybody he paid me a lot so no one gets mad at him. So it's great, you know? <laughs> just an extra, just walking by at one point, just like on a scooter yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. Shit. I want one line. I can't ruin this by saying one line. It's not this kind of movie, you know? It's not that <laughs> kind of movie. I can't ruin it. Um, but yeah, it, this is just one of those ones. It's, it's a real quick watch. It's like 75 minutes. It's not gonna... It's shorter than the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. It's, you know, it's fun. It's a fun little thing. It's like a nice one to support too. You know, that you're supporting and helping like a small filmmaker who's got a lot of good ideas and a lot of heart. Uh, So if you've got Amazon Prime, it is definitely worth checking out. I got a fun fact mostly because I just checked Letterboxd reviews Mm -hmm. and Brendan put out a review himself that just said, God, I fucking love this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Top review, Brendan Steer could make the Irishman, but Martin Scorsese couldn't make the Velocipaster. That's facts. That's cold hard facts. That is facts. This podcast is sponsored by Jarritos. There are 12 flavors of Jarritos, including strawberry, mango, tamarind, mandarin, Jamaica grapefruit, lime, Mexican cola, and more. To my two of my personal favorites I'm holding right here, that's tamarind and lime. Delicious. They come in a glass bottle. They're made with real sugars. Now HFCs and all natural flavors. So go out there and get the Jarritos Fiesta Packs at your local Walmart to try every flavor. The link will be in the description to find your nearest store. Thank you, Jarritos, for sponsoring this podcast. So we thought we'd uh, have a little segment look at what movies... Is the Velocipaster higher rated than on Rotten Tomatoes? Having a look at both the critic and the audience scores, um, some of these, it, it blows out both of those scores, but we'll go through. So I decided that being Velocipaster, we had to put it up against the Jurassic Park movies. Now, it doesn't beat Jurassic Park 1, and it narrowly misses out on beating out Jurassic World 1, but it blows the fuck out of every other Jurassic Park movie. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom has a 47% for critics and a 48% from audiences. It is terrible. I hate that movie. I have received death threats for hating that movie, but I'm clearly right. It's ass. Velocipaster is sitting at a 60% from critics, and I will bump that up by adding my own critic rating to that. Could do it right now, but I won't. I won't, but I could. And a 70% audience score. Um, cause if you didn't know, I'm tomato meter approved, I can give twilight a five star rating and it's real. It counts. My opinion matters. Sorry. <laughs> and then, if it matters, I'm not Jurassic- tomato meter approved, but I do agree. Jurassic world fallen kingdom is absolute dog shit. Uh, philosophy pastor shit. takes that by a mile. Yeah. Um, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, the sequel to the original has a 53 from critics, 51 from audiences. I don't hate that one. The book is vastly superior, but you know what? Velocipaster still blows it the fuck out. Sorry, 
uh, Vince Vaughn. <laughs> Another dub, baby. <laughs> Vince Vaughn. And then uh, <laughs> Vince Vaughn. Goddamn. Again. Then uh, Jurassic Park 3, which I feel like I was one of the only people who liked, but to be fair, I saw it when I was a child. So there's different. You're different when you're a child, but that one has a very sad 48 critic, 36 from audiences, which is always sad. These are the type of movies I expect audiences to actually like, but I guess not. Velocipaster remains king. Mike, what did you find in your searches? Because uh, I did dinosaurs right. and other monsters, which we'll get to in a second. But what did you? What did so you find? So I thought it was only fair. Velocipaster. Obviously, you take dinosaurs. So I obviously searched pastor movies, and what pops up immediately is Heaven is for Real. You've all seen it, 2014. You've all been there. Uh yeah, shits on that movie too. So that's also that's in critic score, and that's also mm-hmm. in audience score. So, I mean, amazing. If you're if you're beating heaven is for real out of all of them, it, there's nothing more to be said there. Yeah, nothing yeah. more to be said. It's art. It's cinema. It's yeah, I was cinema. also going to search uh, first Sunday with Cat Williams and Ice Cube, but I actually like that movie, so I don't, I don't want to put those together. I'm not going to do that. That's unfair. Okay, I get it. That's fair. That's fair. I, I can understand yeah. that. Do you weakness. want me to search God's Not Dead? <laughs> I know you're a fan. I was going to say, yeah, maybe look up God's Not okay. Dead. Let's. Is there, there's not. There's you not do a that. To that movie, is there? There are oh, four okay. God's Not Dead. Um, I'll pretend. One just came out oh, recently. Oh, okay. I'll, I wish I'll I was joking. I didn't say that. So, God's Not Dead. Yeah, this one's actually much closer than you might think. So, the critic score for God's Not Dead yeah. is 12%. Woo! And because uh, people agree that God's Not Dead, it unfortunately loses in the audience score. 75? That's not so- 75%? Come on. 25,000 plus ratings? I would say a bit biased, but... <laughs> to be to Definitely biased, but you know what? That movie literally started its own viral marketing campaign. That movie was all like, text all of your friends and family, God's Not Dead. Send emails and let people know that God's Not Dead. Leave letters. You know, it's unfair. It's unfair. Um, but I guess they made their point. Yeah. They made their point. We know the truth, though. <laughs> Any honest religious person I know knows that has like openly admitted that that movie is dog shit because it is dog shit. But that's fine. We'll move along. No disrespect to anybody who's religious. That's just a badly made movie. You can watch my video on it. I like it. Okay. Um, so I decided I was going to look up some like ninja movies. Um, so I checked the m- most recent Mortal Kombat. It does get blown out in audience scores with an 86%, at least on Rotten Tomatoes. But critics know 54%. Philosopher Pastor takes it. We prefer it. Uh, and I thought it was only right to look up the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, I'm pretty sure audience scores for all three of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are going to beat this. Uh, actually, no. Going into two, it does not beat it. And three absolutely does not beat it. But the first Ninja Turtles movie with an audience score beats it. But Velocipaster's critic score crushes all of them. They're all like hanging out in the 30s. The four, Oh, my God. The third Ninja Turtles movie is a 19%. Velocipaster blown out of the water. And then, of course, I had to put it up against the Michael Bay ones, where, of course, it blows them both the fuck out of the water. Um, 38%. Uh, for critics on the most recent one with a 46% from audiences. And then the, I guess people really, audiences or critics hated the first Ninja Turtles more than the second one by a large margin. 21% for critics and 50% audience score on that first Michael Bay Ninja Turtles movie. I think it's Michael Bay. Do I just keep saying Michael Bay? I think because he's one of the like, producers. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Michael Bay. He is. Yeah, with the Megan Fox and stuff. So yeah. I think that really says all that needs to be said. Velocipaster, Reign Supreme. It is the it's the best movie in terms of we are looking at dinosaur movies, <laughs> pastor movies, or ninja movies. And mutant ninjas, because I would accuse kind of a mutant ninja. So cutting back to the final score. Mike, where does this fall on your one to ten scale of a tasty s'more to a tent on fire? Or do you feel like it's some combination of okay. both? I think it's a, uh, like a, a weird skewed thing because like obviously he wanted the tent on fire while also enjoying a delicious mm-hmm. s'more. He wanted simultaneously double fudge sundae going crazy. But if I'm just going to give it one basic score here, I'd give it like uh, I, you, you kind of you gave me an extra half point. So I'll go to. I go to I go to seven. How's that six and a half? I'm going to seven. Yes. I think it's enjoyable. I yes. think it's lovable. I think it's charming. I think it's 
worth the watch. Short, short fucking movie. You'll get laughs out of it. It's better. I review so much dog shit movies on my channel that are just not mm -hmm. enjoyable to watch, that are frustrating, that are yeah. like, fuck whoever made this. I can't say this with this movie. It's a seven. I definitely agree with that. Um, I also watch a lot of bad or annoying or frustrating movies. I have like an annoyance threshold where like a movie, if it starts annoying me, immediately just gets like it tanks it. You've got like this and I'm like, eh, it's okay. And then if it just starts getting too annoying, tanks it. I think this is beautiful. I think for the type of movie this is, this is like... This is like a s'more that got like flash flamed so that it doesn't quite burn, but it just toasts in such a unique way. So there's just this rich, rich crust to the outside of the marshmallow. You know, that's that's the best way I can describe it. It's on fire, but it's on yeah. fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the worst. Um, I love it. I definitely recommend it. I've been championing this movie for years. Um, I have a full video for it on my channel if you want to check it out. It's pretty old at this point. But yeah, big fan of this movie. I think I was one of the first people to talk about it, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I definitely recommend it. So we both at least recommend it. It's kind of like Twilight to different degrees. I think, you know, I don't know if Mike recommended Twilight, but, you know, he gave it a six and a half. Yeah. We'll take it. That's... Yeah. That's north that seem, of that seems high now. Shit. So, oh, are you talking about this movie or Twilight? Yeah, you did. Twilight. I said Twilight you was a six and a half. You said six point five. For... I swear to yeah. God, I swear you I was, did. Maybe you was, didn't. Maybe I'm wrong. I, was I could be wrong. By super massive black hole in my head in my headset. It had to be. A, it was at least above <laughs> no, 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 five. No, no, no. I, I it was agree. I agree. Shit. It was above five. That's all that matters. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. All right, well, that is going to do it for this episode of Camp Counselors. Uh, let us know what you are thinking down below. If you'd like your questions answered on the show, uh, leave it in the form of a five-star review on Spotify, and we will answer it on the next available episode. So make sure to follow More Butter on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the Camp Counselors podcast. As always, don't forget to butter your popcorn. Very important pivotal information there. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Mm -hmm. I am Mr. GG. You can find me at Mr. GG. Uh, not on Twitter. That's at the Mr. GG because um, <laughs> Twitter sucks. But uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and you can find me on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and Letterboxd at Amanda the Jedi. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>